uh, pro league season. I know what you were saying. I'm just, I'm just giving you heck. Sorry for swears. No, don't don't make me bring up my my catchphrase. Please don't do that. I don't need to hear that anymore. <laughs> SSG will actually ban an operator this time. Crazy to say, but we will actually see an operator ban. They ban out uh, Jackal, which means that Fox A might as well exit the game at this point. It also appears that we'll have a ban from Rec too, so we're not going to see any operator bans be waved over. I know that might sound strange to you, but neither Rise Nation nor EG banned operators. Uh, and we have some chatty Cathys as well in, in the game at the moment, as they are all unable to communicate with each other via voice, so they will just use text. Team Reciprocity will ban out both Dokebi as well as Echo, and will await SSG's final ban. I mean, the way the stats go, it'll probably be Maestro, but who knows? We could see something crazy get pulled out. Oh. Okay. They'll ban a Legion. Is that the first Legion ban we've seen in North America? I believe so. I, I don't think we. I don't think we've seen a. I think we'd 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 have to have. We'll go to the judges. Seen a lot of things for the first time today. Someone at CGG scream at us if we're wrong. We saw we saw a penthouse theater. We did. Which was wild. We didn't see a living room library in the first villa attempt. We could see it again here. Well, I think Rise really wanted to win. I, I mean, th and yeah. I don't say that to sound rude, but I think I don't think that, you know, Rise were, were willing to risk that. And I think this was a motivational boost as well for Dark Zero. I was expecting match two to be a little bit goofier than it was. It was an exciting matchup, and it was really thrilling. And, it, you know, Ry I mean, Rise Nation also didn't ban any operators. So what am I saying? True. We actually, so for the only time this evening, we have four banned operators yeah. in a game. Wow. I didn't anticipate saying that at all on Pro League Desk, but. Also, Legion has not been banned. Thank you, judges. Hey, nailed it. So there you have it. The 0% ban rate. I thought he was. I thought he hadn't been banned either. Well, no operator still has more bans than Legion, so. There you go. Four bans for no operator versus one for Legion. Actually, we haven't seen a single operator ban twice. The bands have been Capital, Valkyrie, Nomad, Pulse, Jackal, Legion, Dokubi, Echo. There's been no overlap. So there's been eight unique operators banned. Uh, it is incredible. Once again, most banned operator today, no, no operator. operator. Four bands. Pretty incredible. Welcome. Really really showing the proficiency. Welcome to North America when nothing's on the line. It's like the missing no of, of Rainbow Six. Yeah. yeah. Or missing number, depending on how you pronounce it. So for uh, SSG starting on the defense, they're obviously on the more favorable side. But reciprocity, I like the lineup. We got Skies going back to Ash. There you have it. It's been a long time coming. What side are they? Well, Mark, I just said they were Aviator in Games Room, but you know you're gonna have to figure that one out yourself. It's gonna rip open the uh, study door partially with a bearing nine as Mark is still facilitating that breach roll. With Retro right beside him on the Thatcher. They're gonna EMP out the wall where the mirror window is in play. Haven't really seen a lot of Mira on Villa lately, even though it used to run, and oh my god, what the hell? Okay, Lax <laughs> Laxing Fox A and Skies, the fragging trio for Reciprocity, all hunting in one wolf pack, and they're gonna get cut down one by one here by Thinking Nade. Laxing on an immediate trade onto Rampy, though, on a flank, so there goes your pulse. Skies has now altered course and headed over to Library. And leaves Chala alone upstairs inside, inside a statuary, so everyone hunting in a pack, and this pack is dispersed. No one's sticking together anymore. That's ACOGS, guys, as well. For as long as he has bemoaned the usage of ACOGS, you have him on the Ash running. He gave in, I think, a season or two ago, as I remember him running an ACOG when he used to be on the roster that was Obey. So whether he diverts course or gets back on course, it's going to be the real question. Retro's all on his own. He's just an arm's length away from Mark, though, inside of the study, using those Xkaros pellets to be able to open up the study wall as Chala finds skies. So there you go. The Ash is not going to have any luck. Was eliminated on the stairs. Chala had picked up his pace since Brian jumped onto this roster. Chala's been in more of a frag operating, uh, I guess, role, you could call it. Mm -hmm. He had taken a bit more of a back seat, but I think with Brian, they've really changed their positioning a little bit. And speaking of, oh, well, you say goodbye to Retro. Laxing's in a storm right in, slap Chala down. As Bosco and Thinking Nade. Thinking Nade, who was involved in the very first kill, he's on 90, he's going to get some marks, but won't be able to hit any of the shots. I'll leave Bosco just waiting, playing around the bomb site. But Bosco's got too many angles to cover, and Laxing will be able to find him. And Retro's there with the lockout. Reciprocity. A thunderous first round, even though they lost a body early. Honestly, beautiful round there from Reciprocity. And that's kind of what Reciprocity feeds into, is chaos and anarchy, and honestly being able to recover in the depths of a round that seems lost. 
at no point did that seem lost for reciprocity. It wasn't this remarkable comeback, but honestly, beautiful separation there and beautiful uh, reaction in the middle of a round that looked uh, looked very discombobulated. So for reciprocity here, like we said, the goal is get at least a couple of attacking rounds. You don't have to get them all. It's Villa. You're probably going to win your defensive set. For SSG, got to bounce back. The roam there from Chala usually uh, usually warrants and nets more kills than was garnered there. Chala was able to grab one over by Statuary, but wasn't able to pick up the two pieces. Laxing charged up those red stairs and collected the kill. <laughs> Laxing and Rampy paying respects to one another in chat. And I imagine that's going to be a theme throughout the game, but it's Laxing and Retro, the only members of Reciprocity who actually got a kill in that round. We still see Skies on the Ash, though. And now Fox A has transitioned over to a Twitch coming off the Finca. So we're really getting into what I think Reciprocity was denoted as as a whole team at the beginning of the season when the roster change came out. A team full of fraggers. We haven't really seen that come into full force at all throughout the season. They've played remarkably structured and remarkably well, well above expectations, at least from the beginning of the season. But now we're finally getting to see them flex what they do best, which is, hi, we can play fast operators with fast weapons and um, have fun. I think a lot of people suspected that Skies would be one of their star additions as he came onto that roster, uh, replacing Goddess as well, who was herself a support player. And Skies has been playing quite a bit of smoke. They've been putting him in positions where Retro is actually doing more and... The hell? Boys. There you go. Hey, they got it. They're just sticking together. This is—they are literally a triforce right now. That's the thing. They are—they are a perfect triforce right now. They're gonna the hold, you know, stick to the game plan. They are a unit. They're finding people on the drones. So I mean, it—it it might work though. Skies is now going in blind. Doesn't look like there's a drone in front of him. A convoy of reciprocity players. He's also changed his choice of weapon, gone back to the R4C with a holographic as opposed to an ACOG G36. Going for that vertical destruction down below, trying to spot out the default mirror spots. But one of the mirrors was placed over by Trophy. Now you've got Fox A and Skies doubling up on these holes being made. That's, uh, that's penance for a double kill in just a moment if someone from Space Station Gaming wanted to look down through those holes and collect a couple of freebies. I'm imagining it was a bit of a joke for them to go through the barrel together, all three of them, you know, a little bit for the show, but at the same time, they've now all spread out, and it's taken so much time off of the clock that I don't I don't really know exactly how they're going to play this one out. I, they've taken control over by the Classical Hall. They've got the stairs as well. They're droning on in. They've got study control. Presumably, the X-Kairos have opened up enough of the wall to be able to push on into study, but... You still need to wrestle 90 control away. You still need to figure out where the investment was from Space Station over on the trophy statuary side. Mark finds Chala through the holes that were opened up inside of Study. It's going to be an engagement here now between Thinking Nade and Skies playing around that pillar. It's not going to really net much for either of the gentlemen. Thinking Nade's still at full HP. Skies really low. Fox A finished by Rampy, who's going to be on the roam for most of the game. And you find yourself back at a 4v4. Brian slaps down Retro. Laxing off screen takes out Rampy. So everything is just falling into place now for both these teams. Yeah, you got a 3v3 right now with a flank coming up from Thinking Nade in behind. And Skies is going to have to come to first blows, but now you've got Laxing on a flank as well. Countering the flank with another flank, but there's not a lot of time left here. Playing at 90 now is Thinking Nate as Skies is holding up from the trophy connector. Bosco will take down Mark with the shotgun point blank. He'll clean that one up himself. Laxing on the trade though, and now popping up as Bosco is able to escape into study. Diffuser is lost and there's no time remaining. They all have to send. Laxing and Skies descending into each bomb site through one door. Bosco not peeking the door frame. There's no diffuser control and we're gonna end the round in a 2v2. There's no time remaining. Space Station will win it out off of Reciprocity's lack of time control. What do you expect, right? Yeah. At that point, you go for broke, you lose the diffuser down inside a study, you're basically on an island, and you can't really get it back. And as good as Reciprocity is at getting kills, a lot of their playstyle hinges on individual performances and the way that they play, right? You got Laxing, who's usually all on his own. He's not really arm-in-arm arm with the rest of the team on most rounds. And because of that, the way that Reciprocity plays has to be very structured because if you lose two of your bodies that are playing all together, that puts Laxing usually in a spot where he's possibly going to be in a, a 2v4 or a 1v3, etc. Now, the good thing is, is that if there's a player who's going to be able to win those <laughs> incidences, uh, that's going to be Laxing. 
but it's not consistent. You can't really build a strategy around it as the same way that reciprocity does in a lot of times. A lot of the situations. Right as I say that, I eat my words because Laxing is 5-0. and oh. But that's typically what tends to happen. And he gets a, a disproportionate amount of focus when casters step in because he does flashy things. And he plays a play style that is, is able to capitalize off of sort of the disorganization that you find from the the defense. And, and when they play in disarray, it's very easy for him to be able to read into that and get a kill or two to, to keep his team really close in the contest. So, Brian staying on the mirror roll. Not really looking to move off of this anytime soon. He's having trouble making a rotate hole that will actually allow him to walk through. Whether it be a rubber band or he's... It, the piece is above you, Brian. I'm not sure if that's client side on our end, but the little top piece isn't made or isn't visible. But, hey, it's right above you, bud. He's got skies out on the balcony as well. He's been spraying towards that aviator doorway window. Lots of windows and a three-man set from Space Station Gaming on the far side of the map. So not atypical to what we've been seeing so far today on the very least. I saw this earlier on, but looks like Reciprocity are going to angle in for a master take as opposed to a far side take. So that mirror over an Aviator Games room is not going to be utilized to its full effect. you now got a reinforcement coming up on top of the Astro rotation. So... They're going to reinforce that off. They got the Astro hatch open as well. So astronomy is free right now for Reciprocity to take. And as Parker, you would say many times over, it's free real estate. This guy's going to walk into a trap, though. So there's a Toxic Babe laying in wait. And you've got another member right in behind him. It's Foxy on the Maverick missing the shots against, it appears to be Brian. Foxy's on one HP now in the back. You got Flashman coming out being caught by the ADSs. You can see the mirror window visible now, and it'll be spotted and disabled now by Foxy from behind. Foxy on one HP, though, is going to have to retreat and not be the pushing force on this fight, because he'll leave that disguise in retro. Oh, but there you have it. Doesn't really matter. Even though that poke hole is created by Foxy, the slower speed on that torch will be his undoing. Ryan's going to be immediately traded off by Skies, and here you go. Reciprocity, able to start the ball rolling. Rampy, unbeknownst to Laxing, will finally end Laxing's reign of terror through these two rounds. Five kills, an impressive tally, assuredly. Just a lot of patience, just a lot of waiting yeah. for the time being as they stack up and hold angles. Neither team really taking the engagement. And for Space Station, as they lose a lot of their fights, leaving Rampy last alive against the remaining two members of Reciprocity, Space Station's patience has been one of their greater strong suits. And there it is. Rampy's not going to be able to get back into the site. Sky's just waiting and watching the doorway. And caution ahead. Reciprocity will pick up a second round on attack, which is not unusual for Villa, but it's definitely about pushing what you see. Anything more than two rounds on the attacking side, and you were having a pretty good game. And it's the sites that it's coming on as well. We've got Aviator Games Room, one attacking round victory, one attacking round loss. We transition to Trophy Statuary, one attacking round victory. Those aren't your typical sites that you grab your attacking wins on in this usual 4-2 split. It's your defense will win your top four sites, and then as soon as the defense rotates downstairs, then you'll get an attacking round. That's the way that it usually transpires on Villa. Reciprocity's attack, though, has already garnered two out of three rounds, which is also something we should note, is it's early on. So right now, you got to watch Space Station go on a run here in the first half on their defensive set to set it to that 4-2 half so we could ideally send off into this tie scenario where both teams go 4-2 split on the defensive side. Or it's Reciprocity going to put a curveball in the plan and for Space Station Gaming as well to win more than two on their attacking side, which, as I just mentioned, it's a very hard feat to accomplish. I'm curious how much a lesion really affects the defense, but given that it's Space Station that banned it, they were likely, you know, expecting to play without it. Yep. Right? It's like, it was like the Empire Illustream match last Friday, was that Lestream banned Thermite after Maverick was banned. Lestream obviously was intending to play with only Hibana, which is what really throws a wrench in the plans of Empire. So yeah, the attackers will likely be at a disadvantage because there's no Thermite, but Lestream will, as an attacking team, likely not be in as much of an advantage because they know how to play around it. At least that's the thinking behind it. Space Station have likely banned the Legion so that it removes a key component of Reciprocity's defense. Yet it's Space Station who right now seem to be struggling on defense. 
Moxing with a nice punch hole downstairs. I guess he's anticipating some resistance downstairs inside of the wine cellar, waiting for a member of Space Station Gaming to rotate down and honestly give him a contest. But that hasn't been the case so far for Space Station. Now the breaching charge from Laxing will come out onto these wine barrels, and he'll start droning himself through as the the wolf pack of reciprocity seemingly has disbanded three rounds in. Not entering in all as a group downstairs. You still have the duo of Retro and Mark upstairs. It seems like Retro and Mark for the first four rounds now have done what the rest of the team usually does, and then Skies, Laxing, and Fox A all go off and do their own thing. So you still have your Breach and you still have your Thatcher clearing out and doing normal sight take things. But now you got Skies, he's gonna have immediate contest from inside of Aviators. He tries to rip directly into the objective. He's gonna look like the kill onto Thinking Nade. He's gotta worry about the flight coming back in from behind. It appears to be Rampy trying to retreat. It's Charlotte instead. And now looking across the way, Skies gonna try and hit the fadeaway on the vault, but he won't land it. Now Bosco will chew him up the SMG 11. Laxing on the trade to Rampy. That's a 4v3 in favor of reciprocity in the midst of chaos. Was that the Obsidian skin on Skies' gun as well? Has he not been saying that he wants that skin for so long? I didn't know he had access to it. That was the year two, year one season pass skin? I think it was year one season pass skin, if I remember. I think so. Yeah, I think so. All I know is I have it. So. I have it as well. <laughs> Get flexed on. Yo. Anyway. <laughs> So, Skies just vaults right in, realizes that the entire site is mostly clear, but of course he doesn't have that diffuser. Safe to say he wouldn't have been able to get it down anyway. Brian takes out Mark, and we're back at a 3v3. Though Space Station's three members, their cohort, have all taken enough damage where one bullet less could be all it takes to shut them down. But with an SMG-11 in hand, that's high rate of fire, Fox will be punished. Goodbye to the Twitch. Losing out on the high rate of fire on the F2 is reciprocity. Still, Bosco's at half HP, Brian low, and Retro inside of Master Bedroom will have a small window in. But look, once again, this patience from Space Station, just lying in wait. Not giving a single inch. Trying to bait out a member of SSG, though, is Retro. Toxic Canister goes across, and you'll have some heavy breathing on Retro's side. He'll reposition to go for a plant, now relaxing, holding on a cover, knowing that the smoke is across the way. Right now, Retro is completely concealed, and the only push is going to come out from around that chassis of the bomb, which Brian will be spotted, and Retro will land the shots, getting the diffuser down, and then also claiming the maestro. It's going to leave Bosco to have to retake. It'll come up the stairs, but it's going to be laxing, holding this angle. Very unlikely that the smoke is going to be able to make it around, and there's the commando doing what the commando does. Reciprocity, a third round on attack. Space Station just being overwhelmed, and despite that patience, when they need to move, it's reciprocity lying in wait of them. Well, the, the good news of this game is it's a little more standard than the other two, I guess I would say. Much more standard than EXGEG, I would say. You still have the Skies Fox A laxing trio doing their thing, but for the most part, SSG are responding accordingly. It seems like a normally paced game. Everyone's in their proper roles, apart from Skies. For Space Station, though, you're in danger territory. We've talked about it a couple times now three attacking rounds out of four rounds as well this is also not typically the order in which things will go typically you'll have the defense start off hot and then you might have an attacking team counter yes laxing the rainbow is magic skins are the best skins in the game we're gonna go back to aviator and games room though now for space station's defenses they were wholly unsuccessful twice in a row on the far side it's not something you see every day either on villa SSG have also gone one for two on this specific objective, so at this point you're probably SSG. If you're losing this round, you're not directly into sight or allowing reciprocity to have their way with the objective wall. There's no impact tricks coming out onto the Habanas. There's there's no contestion of master inside of uh, the trophy and statuary defense. Um, there was obviously a roam set up there from Chala inside of Aviator while Skies went up those red stairs, but wasn't holding the angle to make sure Skies couldn't walk in and kill his uh, kill his teammate. Almost got Bosco, too. Yep. Um, as you called it, the fadeaway. Yep. Here's a big part of why Wreck have been doing what they've been doing. SSG usually have somebody playing in the basement. It is almost always rampy, depending on what role he's on, and the pulse playing down there can still see pretty far up. Also, I think Skies has changed weapon skins every... That's a suppressor. That's a suppressor. Okay. All right. So... I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I, I'm, I'm sure they've got some thought process behind this. Uh, I would hope. Essentially, thinking that somebody's going to be on 90, but 
I mean, we saw the flash go up there. There's nothing really to worry about for the time being. Is it, it seems like that that Triforce, as we called it, is just kind of running all over the map doing whatever they want, while you have Retro and Mark actually doing the job that is required being serious adults inside of the Aviator, as the rest of the team does as they do. But, I mean, despite that, it, it's, you know, it's the Sky's Laxing Fox combo that's picking up most of these kills and essentially allowing Mark and Retro to have all that space to work with and support. See Laxing downstairs doing some work with the uh, electronics detector. And it looks like Thinking Nate was attempting to impact trick that wall from the breaching potential of Mark on the Hibana, but it looks like one round of X Kairos partially was successful. Not sure if that was actually an intended bandit trick or Kaid Electro Claw trick. It is something, but half the wall and half the set of the pellets get opened up regardless. So we have a square opening now in that aviator wall from study. You've now got Rampy down below, as you called, this time in Memorial. And you gotta be wary here if you're laxing. You're within range of being spotted here. A Nitro Cell will go soaring up into the floorboards, but it will not do a single hit point of damage onto Foxy. And now the call will come out for Laxon to go hunting. Rampy will have to try and evacuate. You got Foxy flexing down the stairs as well, and Sky's holding the Astronomy Rotate. Rampy's got nowhere to go but to kill time. He's going to walk into a Claymore first. It's an easy spot for him, but he doesn't know the Skies is waiting for him at the top of the stairs. The G36 suppressed will still garner a kill. I was hoping Rampy had a run into the Claymore, which would have likely claimed both of them. So, a little bit of the offsite presence from Space Station is Mark doesn't appear to be doing any dam or any damage done to him from the smoke, but there you go, the C4 will do all of it. Doesn't need to take away with the toxic canister. It'll also force another member of Reciprocity on in, grab that diffuser, it'll be retro in this position. We'll just wait for some cover from the rest of his team, but he's completely concealed. Laxing is the cross, along with Fox A watching it. Good teamwork will allow Retro to be able to get that plant off. Fox A watching the 90 hallway as Retro takes another one down. Fox A and all of Space Station are bursting on out with Chala in a position now where he can be easily spotted. It's going to be under heavy watch. Four different bodies of reciprocity. And it's going to be an amazing round from Rec yet again. They are looking absolutely unstoppable on these attacks so far. They've taken four of the five rounds, and Space Station just do not look prepared to deal with these strats. Nope. And for Space Station, now, now it's crunch time. Now let's get this one back so it's not a 5-1 deficit going into your attacking side on Villa. We're talking about a complete route here from Reciprocity. If you're Space Station now, you just need to focus on this round and then bank on Reciprocity making a few mistakes. Fox A with the Fuse. Not many will get this reference. And it's not actually a reference to anything. I'm just remembering his uh, Canadian Circuit Land Final performance on the final round on Cafe with Fuse. How long ago was that? That's, that's Ace Clutch Master Canadian Nationals winning Fuse Fox A. Exactly. By the way. He aced on the very final round on Cafe Dostoevsky and won the Canadian Nationals. For Team Canada. For Team Canada, as they were called. I know there's like six of you out there who watched that, but hey. I was there. You were there. I was in the audience. You we were. Had just finish the six invitational group stages for the final day. You did. And we had the next day. It was the day before the invitational 2018. Yeah, day before uh, main stage. Yeah. And when I saw you casting. Aw. And now we're here. I mean, I didn't go for you. No, you I saw did. you casting. Yeah. You went it's hard to avoid you. You went for the free drinks. No, I went. Milos and I actually went to see people. Yeah. The free drinks didn't hurt. I don't even. I don't even think I had an alcoholic beverage that night because I worked the next day. Ah, true. So there you go. True, true, true. There you go. I'm a responsible idol. I did not work the next day. Very similar to Retro and Mark the Shark, a responsible idol. Yeah, they're being the adults today. They're letting their children run amok and have some fun. And they're essentially setting up Fox A skies and laxing in positions to be able to do what they need to do, whether it be in the you know device denial, whether it be in the in the hard destruction, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Also looked like we were gonna see the cluster charge, but oh no, that's a that's a tough one. But he knows that somebody's playing there now though too, right? Because you heard the gunshot as the drone missed the drone the entrance through the barricade. You see that the 90 control is being held by Maestro. So at some point, Reciprocity are going to have to dislodge Brian from playing in that spot. If you look at the actual utility that's on the board of Wreck, outside of flashbangs and a cluster charge, there's nothing really there. But the window's gone, so you can't flush him out with the cluster charge. So that option is off the table. This might be actually very difficult <laughs> to be able to get the Maestro, unless you do this. 
And the pitter-patter sound of the suppressor. Oh, ramp, he's got his back turned! Sky's doing Sky's things, two big kills. He'll just walk right in. And nobody from Space Station is turned the right way. Let's put the bandit now in hot pursuit, potentially, if Chala knows where Skies is, but that information deeply held by Reciprocity. Chala's still there, though. He'll get Retro in the meantime. Doesn't know where anybody else is. Skies won't be able to get another. Chala winning this one out in Obsidian Skin of his own, making a comeback, I suppose. So that's two big kills for both teams. One in the hands of Skies and the other for Chala. Chala had a resurgent game last week and looks to be doing the same again. He's up on top of the bench, but no, his leg will be spotted by Laxing. He leaves thinking Nate on the Kaid and Bosco on his typical smoke roll. Last alive to hold out the bombardment of the objective, but thinking Nate will fall at the hands of the Type 89. The last remaining adult for Reciprocity will grab a kill, and now it's Bosco left alive inside of the vault in a 1v3. Clamp down from every possible angle and going for the plant in behind the bar is your adult figure, your father figure, into Mark, <laughs> putting that plant down. And Fox A, the clutch there as the fuse, reminiscent of that Canadian Nationals game. We head to a 5-1 split at the half. On attack, a 5-1 split is normal for defense. Yeah. Not really normal for attack. Pig, by the way, is is a call. That connector thing. He's not He's not. What calling. is Pig, brother? <laughs> He's not calling Daytona. him. He's not calling him a pig. No. Not to offend your senses, your sensibilities. You know. You can see Villa's a newer map. Nobody's got universal calls yet. We try our best. I fear the day that theme park comes into the rotation. Oh dear does. Lord! There's eighty rooms. There's eighty rooms and eighty different callouts for each room. Yeah. See, because like colloquially, we like use certain terms yep. for for rooms, right? For example, think about bank. You have banana, yeah. Which a lot of teams call it banana, and then there's like I feel like it breaks down very evenly. Like half the teams are like, yeah, it's banana, and then the other half the teams are like, please stop calling it banana. Yep. Fifty fifty can't make everyone happy. Yeah. You try. Laxing has one death through six rounds, and his team is up 5-1. And I know we, we refer to them as adults, but in all seriousness, <laughs> the way that Fox A, Skies, and Lax have been playing have been working really, really well because they've been able to take advantage of the fact that most of the attention from Space Station is going on to what Retro and Mark are doing. Yeah. And this, uh, dare I say it, uh, organized chaos hmm. that we see from this Reciprocity squad is actually working very well. And it's because Mark and Retro are giving the space, as I said a couple rounds ago, to Skies, Foxe, and Laxie. Now, Skies has gotten, or, or Foxe, rather, has gotten very unlucky with a lot of his opening deaths, just finding himself being the one member of those three to essentially be in peril, whereas Skies and Laxie have been maybe a little bit slower to get in, and because of that, they've lasted a little bit longer, but I'm still really like what I've been seeing from this reciprocity trio on attack, despite the fact that Retro has been racking up an impressive amount of kills himself. Now, as we transition over to the second half at Space Station, we'll be on attack. They're bringing a lineup that is pretty common to see. Capitao has been a staple of a, tuple, a couple teams' lineups. Space Station has been one of those teams, along with Dark Zero in North America and Rogue as well, who run Capitao quite a bit. And he's really strong. He's in a very good place now. That M249, which will find Laxing and open things up, giving Laxing not just a second death, but also shut down by far and away the strongest player that's been on Rex's side. What this does is, number one, you have an asphyxiating bolt that expands in size and flushes out defenders really well. Also, that new scope on the M249, which also just took down Mark, is a very strong weapon now, very minimal recoil. That's a good trade there from Bosco's. The Capital is going to be on watch from Skies. In that window by 90. Skies will move on back. But yeah, I'm not surprised to see Capital get brought on in. Those asphyxiating bolts can be so strong. There's only two members of Wreck left. Make that one. Say goodbye to Skies. Flip conventional wisdom on its head, Rob, as the attackers appear to be at a distinct advantage. Let's see if Retro can possibly live a little bit longer than the minute and 20 that's left against every single member of Space Station. He's got an ingress in from the door, and nope, that was short-lived. Okay, I was ready to know. Aw, oh, he drew a sad face. It's okay, Rampy. They're only dead in the game. Yeah, big sad. It's okay, bud. I distinctly remember the sad face that Rampy made on Last this week. map against G2. Oh, right. So. Yeah, yeah. That right. was also a big sad face, yeah. That is one of the most, uh, I, I suppose, tragic moments 
just like from emotions that are yeah. shown to player. We don't really in esports as a whole, you don't really get to see a lot of emotion oftentimes. No. Players kind of hang their head and then just walk off the stage, and that's it. You have those moments where every now and then you'll see a player get extremely emotional, maybe out of anger, maybe out of joy, etc. And that was that was heartbreaking. You got to see it on Rampy's face as he made the realization that you were out of time, and that was it. And that matchup against G2, which if you haven't watched it, you should go back and watch it after this matchup is done in particular. But the attackers, the attackers. Have, now, have now won all but one round so far of this game through seven rounds. On Villa, that's very peculiar. On Villa, as of late, that's very peculiar. That last round really came down to, I think, Wreck being a little bit too aggressive and Space Station doing what they do best, which is holding angles and waiting. Chala on Repel in particular, he just waited for people to take fights with him. And that M249 has very minimal recoil and a really clean scope on it. It stands to reason that you're going to be able to land those shots. There's not that much of a difference between a lot of these players and reaction speed. Sky's altering course a little bit, going away from the uh, the fragment trio. Even though last time around, Laxon was on Maestro and he'll be the same this time. He's uh, Mark now on a Jaeger. So I guess the, the trio has changed lately. But Sky's is on Castle. Castle's a weird pick. Especially considering he's putting on an exterior windows, where that's the easiest one for anyone with breaching charges to utilize. You could have Rampy with breaches, you could have Brian with breaches, you could have Chala with... No, not breaches. You could have Thinking Nate with breaches, though, if you really wanted to. So you could have a myriad of breaching charges. You also just have Bosco with a lifeline. So that'll be one Castle Barricade on 90 window taken care of. Still got Mark in behind 90, bouncing around the pillar, waiting for a repel, but it's Chala on a very, very deep angle. We saw Jarvis utilize last game for Dark Zero. And for this uh, for this defense here for Reciprocity, I imagine the, the main goal was stay alive a little bit longer because they were taking some engagements last time and Chala was ripping right through them. The other thing too is that if you put Chala in a position to watch 90 with the breadth that that asphyxiating bolt now asphyxi asphyxiating bolt now grows to man words are hard is you should be able to push most people out of 90 quite safely with one asphyxiating bolt very similar to the way that you would attack oregon basement as well it makes holding those angles which the much larger range or a area of effect rather the aoe of those bolts it making it really challenging for the defenders I don't know if the knee is spotted here from chal on this angle on the window upside down not be in a position to be able to collect a kill, just waiting for somebody to move. There's a body that's behind the desk, it's just sitting on the evil eye cam, or another cam in general whose position really hasn't been spotted yet either. There it is, it's Mark, and it'll be very easy. As Charles is distracted, and Mark will put down the ADS in triumph. Nice little celebration trophy right there to keep in his back pocket, so now he's still safe from any of those concussions and throwables. We don't call it a trophy system for nothing, Rob. I hate you. It's a minute 10 remaining, and now droned out on those east stairs will be Fox A's. He's droned out by Rampy's Twitch drone. And holding the cross now will be Rampy for anyone to maneuver their way inside of the B bomb site. Inside of Aviator, but Reciprocity obviously vacated. We have three members in and around the uh, bar objective in Games Room. We also got Skies at the top of South Stairs. And Fox A going for a long run. Skies will take his kill clean out of his hands. Bosco will still ultimately perish. And now coming to the top of these stairs, Fox A walking away on literally one HP. There are two members for Space Station left alive to keep this off a match point. There goes the first Evil Eye, and there's an example of the new change. The EMPs will open up the bulletproof glass. Down below, Fox A has been identified and now taken away by Brian on the Type 89. But he's going to take the time to actually go and collect the kill, and he's going to get hit by the concussion mine that Ella keeps in the back pocket in the DBNO phase. EMP goes soaring down a Kobe to 90, and now this will cue Mark to peak. The ping's coming out, but there's basically no time remaining. Hitting another concussion mine is Brian as he tries to walk up the stairs. And Flurry. Now the pings come out. There goes the diffuser. Brian will at least trade him out, but there's not a lot here. No diffuser, no time. The peak comes out from skies, but hitting the deck is laxing. To secure the kill onto Brian. Space Station Gaming on the verge of being eliminated. Yeah, I cannot get over how dominant this game has been for reciprocity. I actually thought going in that it would be really close, but uh, is not to be. There's a bit of a transmission error. Please pay no mind to it. So. <laughs> happens from time to time it happens it's fine so reciprocity find themselves now on match point and on defense the side that is favoring them and in all reality they probably should be able to close it out here going over to trophy and statuary because it does usually lend itself well to the defense that's the way that villa works and for wreck they're going to bring a very familiar for god's sake lineup 
ladies and gentlemen, the Lord. All righty. Lord and Savior, Tachanka. Well, ain't this just a clown fiesta? We got a mute bug, and we got Tachanka, and we've had a cav and an interrogation, and we've had no operator's bands. It's a fun day, Parker. He's wearing the rainbow is magic skin as well. Oh, thank God. That, that makes it okay. I am unsurprised by this gusto that Laxing is bringing out. I will tell you that much. And in a position in which I believe it was the, the six cup that just happened or whichever, I can't remember the exact name of it. It was the French national tournament, I believe, that happened this weekend mm -hmm. in which Lestream, Aces in particular, got a Tachanka spawn kill. I would not be surprised to have seen Laxing do that, but no, there's going to be hesitation here. If he's been droned out, this information on Space Station is going to be theirs. Keep in mind that you have a pretty hard counter for the Tachanka, and it's Chala, number one. Number two, it's also Bosco, and if you need to, Rampy, because you can just tase him five times, take 50 HP away should you need to. So with the match on the line, of course, Reciprocity will roll with Tachanka. Well, why wouldn't you? So now you've got Bosco opening up some windows along with his entire entourage of teammates on Space Station Gaming. Honestly, the focus here should be laxing and seeing if these fixating bolts from Chala can displace them or Bosco just trying to get impacts. You've also got a mirror window in the midst of reinforcements. Bosco's second guessing the repel onto the Astro window. And that's a smart decision there as laxing has gotten off the turret and is angling in with that 9x19 VSN. You've got Chala in probably the weirdest role of all time for a Capitao with an LMG and a very low ADS time, but, or sorry, a long ADS time. Boss will click the kill onto Foxe, though, as he tries to drop down the hatch. Or no, he dropped down the hatch after grabbing the kill onto Foxe. My apologies. Chala downstairs on a roam clear as well, looking for anyone with a Nitro Cell, but Foxe was the only one who could have possibly had a Nitro Cell. And he perished inside of the objective. We still have this mirror window with a nice little Habana hole in the bottom of it, so <laughs> it kind of becomes useless, but I guess you could look and then hit the deck, go prone and peek. You've still got Retro downstairs at the bottom of Astro stairs as well. Now, a second set of Xkairos will be used horizontally instead of vertically to displace the mirror. It will pop open the mirror, thankfully, but now you've got two sets horizontally. You can't walk through that. You still got to crawl through it. Oh, boy. And obviously, this Twitch drum will go mirror hunting at some point. Still got the one next to Tachanka, but it's in a position where it's going to uh, greatly aid any defenders that are playing there. Retro finds Chala from below, and now Laxing is waiting for the Rampy and Hot Pursuit. Mark falls to Bosco, and we actually see a bit of a change from Tachanka, but he'll fall off now. Retro just catching the heel below of the Twitch of Rampy. Doesn't look like he does any damage in the process. They're just trying to back up for the time being with Laxing engaging at a much longer range than his gun is likely suited for. Skies absolutely splatters Rampy on the stairs. And Laxing trying for his own, though. He's severely injured. Now Skies will just try some area denial. Pulls out the SMG, gets one, goes for another as well. Just to try and stop everybody from pushing on in through the doorway. Laxing unable to land the shots needed, and it's been a swing in favor of Reciprocity, but they're all so low. Only 10 seconds left for Reciprocity. Laxing pops up around the shield. PMM out. He's downed. Where are Retro and Skies to come to the aid? But one second left. Brian starts the diffuser plant. Somebody from Retro gonna need to pop in. And SSG peels off. Retro's <laughs> Reciprocity with a score of 7-2. to two will walk away with an incredible performance. And ladies and gentlemen, on our score screen, we are graced by the beautiful Tachanka rainbow skin. And what a weird, but I don't know, fitting end to North America for season nine. <laughs> there was, let me just say, out of all the days that we have had, today was definitely a day. Today was a day, it that's was a for day. sure. That's that's a good way of putting it. So Reciprocity coming with the win. Uh, I believe with that win, they cement third place. Correct. They, uh, went in, they went in with third place. They went in with third. There was a possibility for Space Station to take third. They could leapfrog Rogue, who they're deadlocked in points with, but they don't get any points in this. So Space Station say at five now, I believe. With yeah, they were Rogue tied with Rogue in them. fourth slash fifth, yeah. Yeah. So because of the tie break, Space Station stays at five. So literally nothing changed in the standings between the beginning of today and the end of today. And that's kind of what we said would happen. Yeah, I mean, that was that was the outlook going into today. It, I think it really hinged on that EXG-EG matchup, right? It did, because yeah. 
you have to be a bit disheartened if you're Rise Nation playing in those circumstances, knowing that not only was your fate not in your own hands for today's matchup, but your fate was sealed heading into your match too. Could have been a completely different story if Rise Nation and DZ played first. Yes. But that wasn't the case. Due to the scheduling the way it was, which by the way was done months ago, EXG EG was to start things off, and which could have possibly had playoff implications for EG, but they sealed the deal last week as well. That's how she goes. So nothing changes in North America. Rise, still in a relegation spot. Nobody getting auto relegated out of NA, unless you count the, I guess the corpse of Orglis that has, I guess one member still on it, but not even. So Orglis takes up the auto relegation spot. There'll just be an extra spot in the CL qualifiers for season 10. CL Season 9 has not yet been completed, so we don't know who Rise will play in the relegation match. We have to wait and see the last play day of North American Challenge League, which is this Friday, and then the playoffs, which I believe are next week. At the conclusion of those playoffs, we'll then have relegation matches. So we're waiting on dates for relegation matches for dates when the CL playoffs are done. For North America for the top tier, though, it's EG, it's Dark Zero, they're going to Milan. We knew it last week. The seeding doesn't change. We'll have to wait until Friday to do the seeding draw, though, and that'll be a lot of fun to see who plays who in the quarterfinals and what the bracket will look like for Milan for the Season 9 Finals. I mean, we had that magical moment where G2 and EG got the quarterfinal rematch yep. in Atlantic City from well, the Invitational. SI18, yeah. But, I mean, G2 didn't make it, so... Yeah. In fact, as it stands right now, the only team of the six teams that are locked in that has won a previous Pro League event is Evil Geniuses. So you've got the opportunity for five, unless you count the fact that Fnatic and Nora Rango have won the APAC finals. True. Fnatic has never won a season final nor a major. Neither has Nora Rango, neither has Listream. True. You know, neither have Empire. So, but anyway, we have an interview for you with Reciprocity and we'll bring up Hopes, the coach of Rec. And we'll talk to him instead of the usual Fox. Hey, that's okay. How are you doing? You didn't play in today's matchup, but you got to watch it just like we all did at home. Yep. Uh, anything surprise you about the matchup today? Um, well, we didn't really run strats. Um, I know all week we were just kind of stressing just to have fun with scrims. And uh, what we were doing is we were just having Black, Skies, and Fox just kind of do whatever they want and just run around. And uh, seeing to work in scrims is not part of our strats, but it was definitely just fun to watch. And uh, I mean, it, it works, so we're happy with that. Was there any tactical decision between Skies changing uh, skins every single round, or was that just him doing something to just psych out the opponents. I think that was just him doing what he wanted. So, I mean, we're fine with that. Now, you jumped onto this team and, well, the team's identity changed as well. You picked up Skies. There's actually been a lot of changes for Reciprocity as a whole. I've asked this question to both, you know, uh, Dark Zero and EXG, and I figured I'd ask you as well. What's the biggest thing that you're going to be looking at fixing in the off season between now and when we come back for season 10? Um, I guess just staying consistent. One thing uh, that we have trouble with is kind of keeping the same energy, whether it's scrims or match days. Sometimes we get down, we're very, uh, we're a very emotional team, I guess, for better or for worse. So we play really well when we're like, when we're on one, we're just clicking in all cylinders and we're, we kill everybody. But when we're not doing very well, we, uh, we kind of struggle and that kind of shows in our attacks when we stall out a little bit. Have you settled on your roles as well? Because this was something that I remember laxing talking about. It might have been on Twitter, basically saying that you had changed up your roles a little bit and then there was a bit of a slump that you had and you changed back. And since then, you've been seeing some success again. Was that an experiment that was done out of necessity? Have you solidified the roles that everybody has on the team moving forward? So after our uh, G2 loss to invite, uh, mistakenly, we decided to change some roles, which we shouldn't have done. Um, I know we had Skies more in a, like a hard breach support role, which uh, we were practicing against not very, I guess, high quality teams. We were playing against CL teams and it seemed to work, but we uh, never really got good scrims during that time period. So when we tested out in matches, it didn't really work the way we expected. Yeah, so, I mean, since then, there was a bounce back from your team. You put on an impressive and fun matchup today, and it's always nice to see the Rainbow Tachanka on the uh, the <laughs> final scoreboard. A, a phrase that yeah. I never actually thought I would ever say in my life when I got this job. So, uh, at the conclusion of this season, you get the last interview for North America. Anything you want to say to the fans, your family, your friends, etc., uh, just to cap us off for our final play day in the night. No, we just wanted to thank our fans for sticking with us. I know like this, our second split was kind of disappointing. We uh, 
we really expected to go to Milan. It really just came down to those uh, those rise in the HD matches where we should have got some points at least. But uh, we just want to continue to thank our org for supporting us. And around, they've got some work to do. And Rise Nation, they in particular have some work to do. They picked things up in the second half, but it didn't ultimately end up being enough, and they will have to fight for their right to stay in Pro League against a Challenger League team of the Challenger League's choosing, I suppose, Yeah. over the next week. And we'll know Challenger League for North America runs on Fridays at the conclusion of our EU broadcast. So when EU is done, you got any Challenger League to go and watch. It's like eight hours straight of Siege. It's a, it's a good time. It is a good time. And I know that when I'm usually done casting EU, I likely go home, I settle on in, and I'll watch some NACL as well. But with half the salt, as the name would is, it make you think. Yes. That's it for us for North America. We'll be wrapping up both Latin America and Europe later this week. Thanks for hanging out for North American Playday 14. Enjoy the rest of your night. We'll see you on Wednesday.